Hey everyone, in today's video we'll be talking about another one of the most common triggers of Meniere's disease attacks. And today we're talking about being fatigued and excessively tired. I'm going to explain how that actually can trigger Meniere's disease attacks. So if you're still having attacks, right, vertigo, nausea, tinnitus, lightheadedness, uh, perhaps even vomiting, I think you'll find today's video helpful. And in fact, you'll find the whole series helpful. So let's get into it. So in Meniere's disease, you know, there's a, a swelling in the inner ear, right? Uh, there's a crushing from the inside out. Now what's causing that, a lot of people debate it, but I'm just going to tell you what I've seen over the last 20 years is 90% of the people that make it to me with Meniere's or things like it, they have something going on with their immune system. And there's actually even more and more research coming out now that, that's kind of supporting that. Um, and what that really means for us is that we need to be looking at the immune system and the things that affect the immune system. It's just interesting that all these common triggers from Meniere's disease, disease attack, a lot of them have the immune system in common, right? So you can go back and look at those. Now today, we're talking about how fatigue and being excessively tired can trigger Meniere's attacks, right? The, the first question is why? Why are you fatigued? Is it because you have lack of sleep? Well, let's just start with that. Lack of sleep or interrupted sleep is inflammatory, right? And we just said that most Meniere's, problem, most Meniere's patients have a problem with their immune system. There's something going on, usually inflammatory. And so if I do something that is also inflammatory, it's not, not surprising that that could trigger an attack, right? You have to remember that inflammation uh, and your immune system are everywhere, right? They communicate freely throughout your body. So like if you, for example, twist your ankle, well, the inflammation from that ankle sprain or whatever it is, doesn't stay there. It circulates everywhere. And that's why people with Meniere's don't often have like an inner ear autoimmune disease. They more likely have something outside the ear that is causing an increase in inflammation that is manifesting in their fragile Meniere's ear. Well, and being fatigued and excessively tired is one of the things that can do that. So if you're tired because you don't get enough sleep, well, there's your answer. Uh, sleep is critical. One of the things we do with all the patients that I treat in my office is, if they're not sleeping, we gotta figure out why. And there's a whole bunch of potential reasons for that, right? It could be they don't make enough melatonin. It could be their cortisol is too high. It could be that they're nocturnal hypoglycemic. It could be that they're uh, women and their progesterone levels are too low at night. There's a, a whole lot of different things that can do that, but we have to figure it out, right? If you're fatigued because of lack of sleep, which I think is a lot of people's uh, mechanism, you've got to get that figured out. Why aren't you going to sleep? Do you have good sleep hygiene? Are you doing the things to promote good sleep? So whoever you're working with uh, for your Meniere's needs to know all that stuff because there's too many things for me to go over in this video. Now, I would say the second main reason why being excessively tired or fatigued triggers Meniere's is because when you are tired, the way your brain has been compensating for the imbalance in your vestibular system, it can't do it anymore, right? Um, it's kind of like learning, uh, like walking and chewing gum at the same time, right? So when you are uh, got plenty of energy and you're rested, you can kind of exert compensatory mechanisms over the imbalance between the right and left sides of your vestibular system. Something I've talked about uh, before is this thing called the balance stability pyramid. And essentially what that means is at the bottom of the pyramid, on one corner we have vision, the other corner we have uh, the inner ear, and on the third corner we have the information coming from your joints and muscles. And then at the top of the pyramid is this thing called your cerebellum. And basically what happens in Meniere's is you know, the vestibular system uh, gets broken or decreases uh, in health. And so the other areas have to uh, compensate. Well, that compensation can fail if you're tired, right? If you just don't have the energy uh, to make that happen, then it's kind of like, you know, it just brings out your weak link. So uh, that's the second probably major way that I think fatigue uh, and being excessively tired triggers these attacks because you know, we've talked a lot about metabolic stuff, but there are things that are non-metabolic that can trigger those attacks, uh, such as this one right here. Like, it, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. Like, have you ever seen one that had a, a lazy eye or a kid that has a lazy eye that only shows up when they're tired? Well, it's showing up when they're tired because the amount of energy their brain can devote to that compensation uh, is waning, right? And so the, the imbalance shows up. Same thing for Meniere's disease. For some people, their brain is using a lot of resources on a daily basis to try to compensate and keep that right and left side function uh, calibrated. But if they get tired or get drunk, right, or get sick, that calibration gets cut off and then they have a real big imbalance between the right and left sides and that is enough that can trigger an attack. I'm gonna make another video on kind of non-metabolic reasons uh, that Meniere's can get triggered. I, I think, you know, being excessively fatigued and tired, we know that's a trigger and it's a trigger because number one, 
If you're not getting enough sleep, that is inflammatory. End of story. You create something called sterile inflammation, and Meniere's is generally an inflammatory problem. And the second reason is when you get tired, you lose your ability to compensate, right? You, you lose your ability to walk and chew gum at the same time, and the asymmetry, the imbalance between the right and left sides of your vestibular system becomes very apparent, and that imbalance can trigger the attacks of the spinning and the nausea, etc. So please make sure you're working with someone that knows all that stuff I just said. For someone who doesn't understand about the compensatory mechanisms, I mean, life's going to be pretty tough. So I encourage you to find someone that understands those things we just talked about, okay? Hope you found it helpful. We'll see you later.